In this video, I'm going to use hybridization to explain the bonding in the carbon-carbon double bond, which we find in alkenes. Now, in a previous video, I've looked at the alkanes and explained that the carbon atoms in alkanes actually undergo something called sp3 hybridization. And that's where the 2s orbital and the 3,2p orbitals actually hybridize or blend together to form four identical orbitals, giving us these four identical regions of space, so all the same energy, each with an unpaired electron in, and we call these sp3 hybrid orbitals. And hence we can get four identical covalent bonds from these. Now in the alkenes, it's a little bit different. The carbon atoms involved in the carbon-carbon double bond undergo what's called sp2 hybridization. So hopefully your understanding of sp3 hybridization will help you with this. So if we just look at the letters involved, sp2 hybridization, we're going to get some overlap, some blending together of the s orbital, this s orbital here, and two of these p orbitals and that's going to give us these three identical orbitals which have been made from an s orbital and two of the two p orbitals and so three electrons will live in these obviously unpaired so the fourth electron is going to still be living in an unhybridized p orbital and so if we represent that there, so this electron here is in a p orbital. So you can see there I've drawn up a carbon atom of the double bond, and that's going to be this one here in this diagram. So these three sort of lobe-shaped, single lobe shapes, if you like, these are the three sp2 hybrid orbitals, and there's the unpaired electrons in there. So this electron here is actually in a p orbital, so there's no hybridization occurred there. And if we remember, p orbitals are lobe shaped, but there's an upper lobe and a lower lobe. So there's the p electron there. And you can see I've drawn an identical carbon atom on the right hand side now. And that's obviously going to represent this carbon here. With exactly the same thing going on, three sp2 hybrid orbitals with one electron in each and there's that unhybridized p orbital with its electron in there. Now you can see we've actually been able to form a covalent bond between these two carbon atoms. What type of covalent bond is that? Well the orbitals are overlapping end to end and so that's a sigma bond. I'll just point out before I move on to the what happens to the green um, p orbitals, obviously these electrons here in these sp2 hybrid orbitals, they can do exactly the same thing there. So if this was ethene, like we've got on the left hand side, you've got hydrogen's electron in its s orbital, and there's the sigma bond there, and there, and so on. So these are all sigma bonds. So what happens to these p orbitals? Well, these regions of space actually start to expand. Until eventually, they actually start to overlap. So you can see this green dotted line is the p orbital, which is expanding, and it's actually starting to overlap with the one on the right. And the same is going on underneath the sigma bond as well. And so effectively what we've created is a new region of space for this pair of electrons to live in. So we've got a region of space above this carbon-carbon sigma bond. And remember these electrons are constantly backwards and forwards in this region of space. So they're either both up there or they're going to be both down there. So if we think about how these new orbitals, these new regions of space have been formed, they're actually different to sigma bonds. 
Remember, sigma bonds are formed by the end-to-end -end overlap of the orbitals. This green region of space, these two green regions of space, have actually been formed in a slightly different way. And it was the overlap of the sides, the sideways overlap of the orbitals, not the end-to-end -end overlap. And so this has got a different name. It's not a sigma bond, it's a pi bond. And you can see I've written an explanation there. Pi bond is a shared pair of electrons in a region of space, region of space, that's been formed by the sideways overlap of two p orbitals. So I'll try and model that now. So there's an electron. My arm here represents the p orbital. So my hand's the upper lobe and my elbow's the lower lobe. So there's one electron in the p orbital there. There's the other one. Remember, they start, they overlap, expand, and form this new region of space here like that. So, remember, so this is sideways overlap as opposed to end-to-end -end overlap. So this is pi bond. You can also use this model to try and explain the relative strength of the two bonds. So sigma bond, remember, end-to-end -end overlap, and pi bonds, side-to-side -side overlap of those p orbitals. So which is the strongest bond? Is it this one or is it this one? And it's obviously the sigma bond is much, much stronger than a pi bond. And so when we go into the reactions of the carbon-carbon double bond, it's the pair of electrons in the pi bond that actually are involved in the reaction because that bond's easy to break.